Hello everyone. I'll be talking today about balanced reduced order models for iterative nonlinear control of large scale systems. I'm Boris Kramer from the University of California, San Diego, and this is joint work with my previous master's student, Yizhe Wang, who is now at the University of Texas at Austin uh, in a PhD program in at the Department of Information, Risk and Operations Management. So model-based feedback controls for high dimensional systems is a real challenge, uh, namely due to the nature of the effort that is needed to compute nonlinear to compute nonlinear feedback, but also due to the high state dimensions of these systems that often arise from discretized partial differential equations. Especially when we consider the task of real-time control and filtering, this problem becomes even more so a challenge. In this work, I want to present a new framework to design controllers for high dimensional linear systems that essentially combines two concepts. The first concept is the control concept, which is the iterative linear quadratic regulator, so ILQR concept, proposed by Todorov and Lee in 2005, which has been used in a variety of highly nonlinear applications such as UAVs, exoskeleton models, robots, robotic arm models, and so forth. However, the, the ILQR framework is computationally very expensive, so using it on a direct semi-discretized PDE would be quite challenging. To enable this nonlinear framework to be used for, use, uh, for high dimensional systems, we actually uh, produce reduced order models via projection. And we compare two different methods. One of them is balanced truncation, and the other one is LQG balanced truncation. The controlled problem we can consider is the standard uh, control problem where we try to minimize over, we try to find a sequence of controls. This is in discrete time that minimizes the quadratic cost function, which is written down here. J has a terminal constraint and then a running cost subject to the dynamic constraint imposed by the system itself. We use the usual notation where X is a state at step time step K, XK, uh, UK is the control from X from one colon N, we abbre abbreviate the sequence of these states that get us from zero all the way to N. And then uh, F is, the different, is a function that's differentiable in both arguments and Q is the symmetric positive de definite matrices that kind of penalize the state and R penalizes the control. Just to briefly review, the iterative linear quadratic regulator is a, an algorithm that starts with a nominal control sequence, U, that's imposed from, so this includes all the controls. You might have M different controls and all these controls over time from one to the final time step N minus one and then resulting nominal control trajectory from one to N. And it proceeds in a few steps. Uh, basically, I kind of made a high level summary of this algorithm here. So while you're still within a certain threshold, so you prescribe a stopping tolerance, and basically you update the nominal control sequence and the nominal trajectory at every step, at every iteration of this algorithm. Uh, the algorithm does compute local linearizations. That's where it gets the iterative name from. And then it uses a modified LQR to update the controls. So the, con the update to the control delta UK gets added to the previous control and has three contributions, one from um, minus K, K delta XK, that's the classical state feedback that we know. But then there's also two other auxiliary contributions that are coming from an, an auxiliary state V and also from the control. In order to compute these um, gains, obviously, K, K, V, and K, U, we need to do a backward in time iteration where we start with terminal conditions as for SN as the final cost constraint. And then for VN, we initialize at the terminal condition with this. And now we need to go backwards in time. You see all these gains have a very similar structure. They invert the same matrix. So there's some computation that can be saved. Um, but basically we need these three gains. They run backwards in time. And then I can update from the terminal. Now I can compute SK once I have SK plus one and K. And then I can update VK and I go, go to the next iteration. So I'm count, counting down from the terminal um, to zero. And then I have a sequence. This gives me my new control sequence, um, UK. 
So it gives me my updates, Delta UK, my new control sequence, and then we go through the next generation of this algorithm. So now how can we make this feasible for nonlinear problems that are high dimensional? Well, we use the framework of model reduction uh, and specifically balanced truncation. Balanced truncation separates the map from the controls to the outputs into a map from the controls to the state, which is kind of like controllable map, and then from the state to the output, which is the observable map. And in, in a nutshell, without going into much detail, it replaces the full order model in n dimensions. So n could be hundreds or thousands or millions um, with a reduced order model that's, pro that's projected with projectors TL and TR in R dimension. And R is often much, much smaller in the order of um, tens or so. And the, the quintessential kind of notion of balancing here is that the reduced order model over here has controllability and observability agreements that are equal and diagonal. In order to compute these transformations, we need to either solve a sequence of Lyapunov equations, our standard controllability and observability agreements, or we can choose something that actually takes into account the control problem a little bit more, which is the um, Riccati equation. And from either one, we obtain a set of Gramians, and with these Gramians, we can compute the balanced state realization. So here, let me show you an example how we combine the ILQR algorithm and different model reduction strategies to arrive at a control framework for Berger's equation. So here I say the one dimensional Berger's equation where the spatial variable lives in zero one, time is greater than zero. I have a reasonably small viscosity, uh, five times 10 to the minus three. This essentially makes the system quite nonlinear in its behavior. And I have some controls. Actually, I'm having five controls that I'm using here that are distributed throughout the domain where this psi is the characteristic function. I have periodic boundary conditions. Uh, my initial condition is an exposed sign that's sitting between zero and uh, 0 0.5 and then it's zero uh, on the other end. So basically it's a non-differentiable initial condition. And I discretize it moderately with about 100 degrees of freedom, 101 here. And what happens, this is a quadratic model um, due to the quadratic nature of the C squared here. I'm actually getting a quadratic high dimensional model in this sense in 100 dimensions. And I simulate everything up until about five seconds. So now this is a, now I wanna do a nonlinear reduced order model, which I computed. The, Projection-based models take the same form. They do not alter the structure of the model. So I'm getting again a quadratic model back. Um, these reduced representations of the, system, the linear and quadratic matrices and the input matrix take a projection form um, as, as written down here. And I am basically in order to compute TL and TR, I was solving the respective Lyapunov or Riccati equation with the linearized matrix A lin over here. Then I got my basis, and from this basis, I projected a nonlinear system. So the reduced order model I have is fully nonlinear. However, I use the linearized matrices to compute the basis in the first place. We see that the Hankel singular values, which are the singular values shown in blue, um, decay rather fast. This, this indicates that balanced truncation will produce a, a good reduced order model, whereas LQG balanced truncation um, the Gramians, so-called Gramians of this uh, Riccati equation, the, the singular values decay rather uh, slowly, indicating that we might need a large dimension for a reduced order model in order to be accurate. Nevertheless, I wanted to make this comparison. I used both reduced order models to compute a control sequence, uh, UR from balanced truncation and UR from LQG balanced truncation. And both, I was uh, pretty, uh, um, pretty limited with my computational budget. So I set R to be five. So reduced dimension of five. And what is show, show on the right side is I'm comparing the cost. So um, the cost of the reduced order model. So the running cost in the reduced order models are the thick blue line and the thick red line and the full order model cost. Once I plug this controller in to the full order model is shown below. So what I see is that uh, the number of S SDI LQR it, um, algorithm iterates and improves the control sequence, we see the control cost going down a lot. 
Um, and then at the final condition, we're using the converge control and plug it into the full order model. We also um, track now as we have a converged controller, we're plugging this converged controller computed from the reduced order model into our full order model. And we track the norm of the output, which is now the controlled output, and we track the norm of the control. The control goes down, so control action goes down um, as in the uh, output also gets, um, gets damped quite a lot. Remember, we do have periodic boundary conditions so there's still some low level oscillations happening here. Um, and then lastly, I'm also showing here the different states. So this is the open loop state of the full order model where we see that the initial condition propagates through and gets convected through the domain. And then I'm plugging in a, a controller obtained from the ILQR with the balanced truncation model and one with ILQR from the LQG balanced truncation model. Both of them reasonably stabilize and really drive the state um, close to zero. And here at the end, I'm showing a couple of control costs um, that you might be interested in. So basically what we see is that the controller is um, suboptimal, obviously for the high dimensional model. It was designed for the low dimensional model, but it performs quite well. And we do actually see that um, the balanced truncation model gives us a better cost than the high dimensional model. So that controller gives is better for the high dimensional model than for the than uh, the one obtained from LQG balance truncation. So in, in a nutshell, we have found uh, nonlinear reduced order model based controllers perform well on the full order model. Uh, standard balance truncation and LQG balance truncation reduce the state dimension by 95%. And we definitely have to look more into nonlinear balancing and system theoretic approaches coupled with ILQR um, to go away from the linear model reduction approaches that we used here. So thank you so much.